that two million people are incarcerated inside of the United States alone. There are more people in jail than there are in universities and colleges. And you'll be shocked when you go inside these institutions and see people in some cases that have nothing to do with crimes inside of the institutions and inside there for life. And one of the secrets we found is that people in a maximum security prison were making clothing, they were making running shoes and, and, and jeans, and they were only being paid about 50 cents an hour. And so you have thousands of people, many of them in jail for life, working for 50 cents an hour. So what you have is a modern slave state. Another form of slavery which is done in the name of freedom and justice. And they will come to you with the type of speech that you nor your parents have never heard of before. And then we look at the Muslim world. And we see in the past 50 years, we see gen massive genocides taking place. We see Palestinians driven out of their land. We see people throughout Africa living under tyrants financed by industrialized nations. We see wholesale murder and genocide. And now with technology, you even see the bodies of the people in Kosovo, in Bosnia, in Kashmir. You see it with your own eyes. We witnessed this being slaughtered all over the planet. Thousands of people mercilessly being killed. And then September 11th, an event that took place that with the use of technology, with people's minds being connected together by the electronic technology, it becomes a worldwide event. And no doubt it was a horrendous event. But there are also horrendous events that took place in Rwanda and Cambodia and Vietnam and in other parts of the world. And so the September 11th took place. And we as Muslims watched this thing happen. And we said, no, don't let them blame this on us. They blamed Oklahoma City on us. Only by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some information got out. And they realized it wasn't a Middle Eastern character. That it was one of their own right-wing Johnny Appleseeds. One of their own homeboys who carried it out. But this event took place, and we did not, I want to make it categorically clear, we did not enjoy this event. It is not an Islamic event. And you will be surprised to know that there is a masjid. There was a masjid in the trade center, in, in, in the Twin Towers. Over 1,500 people used to make Salat al -Juma. And we know that if 1,500 people made Juma, how many didn't make the Salat? You know our community. So that means there were thousands of Muslims inside of that building who also perished. And up until now, we have received no conclusive evidence, only circumstantial evidence, but nothing conclusive. And, and, and they tell us that these young Arabs carried this thing out. And then we saw in Saudi Arabia, some of the people actually came, their name was on the list, and they went to the embassy and said, I'm alive. I didn't do it, man. I'm right here. Okay? No. Then they say, no, they carried it out, and these so-called religious extremists, before they do it, they're drinking alcohol the night before, getting drunk, and then they're going to sacrifice themselves for Allah. He writes a letter which so conveniently is found, and then it says, uh -uh, Bismillah wa bismi nafsi wa ailati, in the name of Allah, in the name of myself, in the name of my family. This, nobody writes like this. This is a strange situation. And then the building is, it falls down and destroyed and incinerated, and they find the passport. <laughs> they find the passport, man. So we're saying, what is the reality of this situation? 
Why are we being blamed for this? Why is a confusion happened when people are, 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 are made guilty before they are even taken to court? And every human being is supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. And then the whole of the Muslim world suffers. People who have nothing to do with the Middle East, nothing to do with any of this, are suffering behind this. But at the same time, we begin to see the climax of a major change in society. The climax of a new world order. And we begin to see a type of integration between information technology and trade. We begin to see the economy, politics, culture, and ideology being transported simultaneously from nation to nation. And with this technology, with the ability to transport ideas, the very value systems of people, the way that they eat, what they enjoy to do, how they enjoy recreation, their racial concepts, their culture, their ideology, being transported all around the world, a type of globalization. And with this boom in the information technology, and with this major event that takes place, now it comes to a culmination, and it starts to reach a high point. And so with the innocent people, we look at this, and we say, what is going on? What is happening to the world? that had so many different varying views, different nations, different ways of approaching things that can complement each other. Now we see politics is stripped of real power. That the economy governs all social exchange. We see that the states serve the financial powers, power structures. That the real power is no longer in the hands of the generals. But the real power now switching to the hands of the people who run the economy, to the banking systems. And then we see that politicians play the role of public relations officers only to control the masses, either by lulling them to sleep or by terrorizing them. And then we see that the masses of the people become helplessly preoccupied. Their lives are now bombarded with a series of cultural events. And these cultural events start to become the most important things in their lives. The World Cup, the Major League Series, the rugby, the cricket, the hockey, the tennis, whatever the sport may be. We see whole nations coming behind sports. And the national heroes become sporting people. Even in Saudi Arabia, even in our own Muslim countries, the national heroes are now the soccer players. Who kicks the little ball inside of a net? He becomes the hero of the nation when people are dying on the ground. But yet we become preoccupied with this. And it becomes a type of indoctrination happening to us. And with the use of powerful music playing on our emotions, with videos now being taken to the furthest extremes in the planet, people's thinking processes are changing. People are now in love with the superheroes, even confused about their own identity, trying to change themselves, change the color of their hair, change their eyes change the way they dress, change the way they talk on a global level. And then we see drug addiction reaching a point that humanity has never seen before. And after traveling to over 36 countries, looking at the Muslims and being with them, I have found that in all of the communities that the young people are, are being confused with drugs. It is pouring into our countries. No matter what form it takes, cocaine, LSD, psychedelic, depressants, put you up, put you down, confuse you, but create a false world and give you a false dependence so that you become dependent on the chemical. 
You forget about Allah. Your God becomes the pusher. Your God becomes the chemical. And so creating this dependency amongst the masses of the people. And then we see lethal social diseases being spread. And it is said that in Southern Africa, and Allah knows best what this really is, but they say that in some parts of Southern Africa, one out of every four people is HIV positive. It has reached this level. Now whatever this HIV is, there's a lot of theories. Whether it is some germ warfare, whether it is something passed through homosexuality, whether it is a type of corruption, what some doctors have even said is that your immune system can break down by a number of factors. Not only a virus that they had never really located and shown us what it looks like, but the immune system can break down from malnutrition, from tuberculosis, from forms of malaria. And they've listed almost 40 ways that your immune system can break down and if you take a test, you will be considered HIV positive. But whatever it is, it's killing us. It's killing us in large numbers. Then we see the planet malfunctioning. We're supposed to be rising in technology. Our life is supposed to be getting better. But the very planet that is created in order to serve us is malfunctioning. The air is becoming polluted. The water is becoming polluted. The animals are dying. They are cutting down the rainforests. They are destroying forms of life. And now we are getting strange forms of cancer. Other diseases, other lumps and, and tumors and things popping up in our bodies that we have never seen before. And it's happening all over the planet. And so what is happening in front of us? When people begin to speak out, when they try to protest what is going on, even in a legal way they are protesting, they find themselves either swamped with false information coming out of the technology or they find themselves terrorized. They find themselves in a state of fear. And so when the events happen as September 11th, the world changes. Those who are connected to the electronic technology are put into a state of fear and images are being placed in front of their eyes as the images were before. And these images are connected to the geopolitical situation. Don't be fooled. Why do you think back in the, in, in the 60s we still had um, the remnants of the bad guys coming from World War II? Japanese, Germans, Russians. Why do you think that coming into the 80s and 90s, Spanish drug cartels, Afro-American gangs, and the most sinister character you can bring to the screen, the Arab terrorist. He seizes his hostages, and he will not release them until you release his comrades from the jail. This is before September 11th. Before that day, Chuck Norris was chasing us. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Steven Seagal, all of the so-called folk heroes are chasing around this image. We were being prepared for something. Our minds were being prepared for something. This does not happen by chance. And we, the innocent people, trying to look at the world and trying to understand what is going on, we see everything is moving toward one world state. One world police force. One world bank. And one world unelected elite that rules over us not based upon the will of the people or democracy, but rules over because of control of the bank, control of the economy and the flow of the money, which is changing every day, changing from gold and silver to paper to plastic. And now they are trying out chips. They're putting chips in somebody's head. They tried it in Florida. And if you can take anything from me, don't ever let anybody put a chip inside of you. Don't let them do it to you, man. A microchip. And they say, no, it can do you a lot of good. If, you have, if you're diabetic, it will say you're